All right, you guys, this is Ross. Today we're looking at the melons. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update here because I actually this year, for the first time, this is the fourth year that I've been growing melons in different ways. We grow them on the ground. We've grown them up trellises here vertically. This is the first year that I actually have sweet melons. And I mean like, you know, to the sweetness level that uh, is sufficient, <laughs> let's say. We still are not really at the wow factor level of sweetness. When you have a, a peach as an example, or a persimmon that's really well ripened on the tree, you thinned out your fruits enough, you haven't gone a little bit too overboard and gotten too greedy, uh, you know, you get some really nice pieces of fruit with some really high sugar content that can be a bit shocking and really give you that wow factor. That's what I'm looking for with these, these melons. And as you can kind of see now at this point of the season, a lot of the melons have wilt. The plants look really sad. This is just normal for this time of the year. Um, it's also been really hot here. We've had a heat wave. We've also had extremely dry weather. So this bed actually, this raised bed that these melons have been growing in has been rather dry. And we did an experiment, if you guys recall, to test to see if it was the water, the soil moisture that would help sweeten the fruits, or if it was due to a lack of sunlight that it was causing my fruits here not to be very sweet. And I can 100% uh, say that it is actually a lack of sunlight or not enough photosynthesis to be directed into these fruits. So I can really put that at least for myself to bed. I'm sure less water is certainly gonna help sweeten them a little bit further. But if you don't have enough photosynthesis, if these leaves here are not producing the sugars that they need to then be injected into those fruits, you're just not gonna get the sweetness level that you desire. And I mean the, the super sweetness level that we all want, that wow factor, that wow experience that I had four years ago in Japan when I visited and got to try some really special melons. Now, the same thing happens, by the way, with our peaches, with our stone fruits, with a lot of our trees. If you just have too many fruits on the tree, like here's my peaches as an example, if I don't come in here and thin out these peaches every year, I don't get enough photosynthesis because there needs to be a certain number of leaves for every fruit on the tree. And every tree is different. They say actually for the rule of thumb with the persimmon over there, I can kind of zoom in for you guys. The persimmon needs about, I think, 15 to 21 leaves per fruit for them to be sufficiently sweet uh, for commercial ability. So it's the same thing with these melons. And in the past, every single year, including this year, I run into problems with disease. We also just do not have enough sunlight here in this spot. It's not even getting eight hours of light every day. Um, so combined with all these factors of disease, like the wilt is now wilting all the leaves, destroying the leaves, we also get mildew over time, even though it's been super dry. I was really shocked to see that we actually have some mildew on some of these leaves. Why? I don't know. I don't understand that one. Um, so the point is, is that over time, these plants really don't get enough light. Over the time in which they ripen at a certain time of the year, like right around now in August, the plants just look very sad. It's just a matter of time. It's like clockwork every single year around this time, they look very sad. And the third thing actually is that I've just had too many fruits on the vine. So we had some Grisolette melons, which are the hybrid version of Petit Gris, Petit Gris de Rene, which is supposed to be the sweetest, or at least well-regarded as one of the best tasting and sweetest melons in the world. It's a hybrid version of that, that I would argue actually is very sweet as well. But both of my Grisolette vines, I allowed them to ripen three fruits and really all at the same time. So I had a total of six melons from those two vines. Quite productive. It's a really a nice thing to see actually with the hybrids that they can do that. Um, but it just really is not enough photosynthesis. Uh, there wasn't enough leaves. The plants were not vigorous enough. The plants were not healthy enough. 
uh, just everything in general was not set up for those plants to do what they did to then support the sugar content needed for those fruits. So a lot of you guys were saying it's really one melon per vine. It's true. Um, yeah, of course you can have, you know, greaselette melons or a hybrid melon as an example, produce multiple melons per vine, but you're just not gonna get the sweetness level, if, you know, if you had thinned out the melons to just one. So that's been my biggest wake up call here with these melons. Wasn't sure which one it was, the soil moisture or the lack of photosynthesis, the lack of sugars being produced. It's the sugars being produced. So these plants at this point now, as I said, they look really sad. We have harvested a couple today. Very soon we'll be able to harvest a few more, like down here is a saver melon. It's a hybrid of a Charente. We also have some others here, like uh, some more Grisolette, some other Charente melons. We even have over here, this is a melon called Zata, an Italian heirloom, which will be able to be harvested very soon here. You can see it's just sort of slipping off the vine. We have to wait probably two more days. But just in general, we don't really have enough photosynthesis. The leaves, again, they look really sad, whether that's wilt, whether that's you know, uh, disease, some of them are still kicking, still looking decent, but just in general, uh, you know, there's so many factors here, but we don't have the photosynthesis required. Um, now, in the future, if I had these melons, let's say planted in more sunlight, well, they're supposed to have a stronger immune system. The more sunlight you can give your plants, typically the better their immune system can be against these things like wilt and also these things like um, mildew that we're seeing on the leaves. So in the future, when you are growing these melons, really try to put them in as much light as possible. Um, I probably in the future will only go with very specific varieties like Grisolette because it did perform so well for me this year and is producing the sweetness level that is at least adequate. If I had thinned out those melons to one rather than three, I probably would have had the experience that I was looking for. So we can succeed with this. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Here are two of the melons in the containers that we've been looking at. They've been rather sad. They've actually needed a bit more water than I've been giving them, but they are also now starting to get a little bit of disease, a little bit of problems. This is mostly here from the change in humidity, the humidity shock. It's not necessarily Fusarium wilt. I'm finding actually much better success growing them in containers, but this is a Petite Gris de Rene right there. This will be ripe, I don't know, hopefully soon. And then we also have a Zata back there, which I know Zata is a later melon. So just in general, I actually, moving forward, I'm probably gonna try growing more melons in containers. I actually really like this. These are only five gallon size grow bags, which probably could go with a slightly larger container. I would say probably a seven gallon might be the best situation and probably plastic sides and growing them in containers, controlling the water in there and that soil moisture is probably my best bet. Uh, there's less wilt, there's less disease. Um, I can grow them here on the patio where there's potentially here with the figs a little bit more light than actually over there in the garden. Um, so, but we're gonna keep growing them, I think, in the future in the garden. Here are some of the fruits that I've harvested. And I wanted to do a little bit of a taste test with you guys to really, I think, bring this point home that this is, again, possible. These can be very sweet. Here's a, um, looks like a Zata from a, a plant that really is quite diseased. And it pretty much is so diseased that it rejected this melon. It's not even, you know, it's kind of deformed, this melon. And I would expect, because it just had to be, it got rejected off of the plant, there's almost no way that this is, this is going to be sweet. And this is kind of what I would experience in the past. Although not all of them are getting, you know, rejected off of the vine like that. This is a pretty 
extreme case, but um, this is in no way probably going to be very sweet. Nope. It actually is quite perfumed. You could tell there's actually some good, um, you know, it smells great, but it just isn't sweet. So like, you know, that's kind of my point. And what we experienced really in the past was something a lot like that. Here is, I think, either a uh, Grisolette or a Petite Grise de Rene. I did not label some of them. But regardless, this, is, this should be a very, very sweet. This is a sweet variety. Oh, this to me actually looks like a Petite Grise. This is my first Petite Grise, because you could tell by the inside pulp there. See how there's like a little bit of a separation? That looks a lot different than what I've been harvesting from uh, my Griselettes, which is again, the hybrid version. Here is the hybrid version of Petit Grease from Johnny's. So anyway, let me try both of these. Uh, this one here, I've purposely saved half of it because it is very sweet. I wanted to get that on camera for you guys. Let me try this Grisolette, or this uh, Petite Grise. First real experience with this one. So it's not sweet. And the reason for that, again, is because the plant that I harvested this from looks very sad in this current moment. And in the last couple, really the last week, week and a half, a lot of the plants have really started to look sad. Um, so at the really the most crucial time of their ripening, the plants have looked very bad. Now this Grisolette here, looking at the plant, it actually was a pretty reasonably healthy plant when I harvested this. And there was only one fruit off of this vine and this is quite sweet. This is uh, much sweeter than any other melon I've ever, ha I've ever had or harvested from my own yard, my own experiences. I would argue this is very, very good. And I'm even um, tempted to save seed from this. <laughs> Maybe I could get something in the future that's reasonable. Um, but. I know they can be better than this. I know I can still do better. I can still get that wow factor. This would wow anyone. So this is significantly better than what any American can get at the grocery store. This is still significantly better than probably what most people harvest in their own yards. But I know I can do better. And that's really the goal is to get some ridiculously sweet, super flavorful melons uh, that just blow you away. So that was this little video here guys this update on the melons i hope you guys are having a much better time here everything's sad diseased and our melon season's kind of coming to an end even though we still have many more to harvest i really don't expect many more to be sweet like this one is here from uh Grisolette. so thank you guys here for watching please hit that subscribe button check out our other videos on the melons that we've done you can follow my journey We'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Take care.